my demo of Binky by Snarky Puppy, and I just love it when a folkloric conga pattern works for a pop song. So in this video, we're talking to Nate Worth about the story behind those percussion parts. Coming up. And then I think Marcelo was like, well, I like this pattern. And this is, we weren't even discussing whether it was a bembe. Hi, my name is Kevin Zoner, and if this is your first time in Rhythm Notes, please subscribe so we can help you level up your drumming today. And if you haven't heard about Rhythm Insider, our monthly newsletter, go to rhythminsider.com forward slash subscribe to receive lesson PDFs for the YouTube videos and links to related articles among other benefits. Subscribe today and you get a free gift. Binky was recorded live in 2011 with some really interesting rhythm parts. It recently came across my YouTube feed and the suggested videos, and I was hooked. After watching it a few times, I really wanted to dig into what was happening in the percussion parts, in the bass line, the guitar lines, the keys. It all worked so well together and felt very good. In particular, I recognized a bembe conga pattern and really wanted to know how that pattern made it into the groove. After listening to the song a few more times, I had so many questions about the shakers and other percussion parts and really just the story behind that live session. So I got a hold of Nate Worth, who's a good friend of mine, and was able to get his side of the story behind the Binky live session. I was perfectly comfortable to film and record Binky by myself because we had been performing it live. So I was ready to do like my octopus thing and playing conga with one hand and, you know, like just go for it. But whenever they're there, it's like, those guys are so amazing that I just want to hear what they're going to put on it. So I was like, Keita, what are you hearing? And, and he was like, oh man, like I got these cowbells and like he had stuff that they brought. And so like he sets up some stuff and because we always had about an hour in between sets. And so he's setting up his things and he has these really resonant cowbells and I don't remember if if a if a rhythm was discussed, but but that's kind of the vibe of 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 combining folkloric music with modern day music for me is the way that my thought process happens is I'm just hearing something that works and accompanies the music first, bef and and sometimes I have time to analyze what that is, so that I can be like, oh, I'm this is a bembe. So, hey, let's play this cowbell pattern or, hey, let's add this shaker thing over it and, and give it more of that traditional support. And then also sometimes it's like I'm trying to avoid that. Like I don't want to do what is, is meant for that groove because I'm not playing a folkloric. I'm not trying to, you know, quote a folkloric moment there. Tell me about the conga rhythm. Like who decided to play the bembe pattern was that something that you were doing before the live session so i basically went to those guys and i was like this is what i'm playing uh and i don't have to keep on um playing the conga part when we go to like the solo section since you're already going to be on congas marcello and then i think marcello was like well i like this pattern and this is, we weren't even discussing whether it was a bembe. If you're getting value out of this video, hit that like button and please share it with someone who you think will also get value out of it. So let's go over the percussion parts. Nate's playing shakers. In the left hand, he's playing maybe a maraca and some sort of rattle, gourd shake or something like that, a combination to get the pulse going. And then he's also playing uh, an, another rhythm um, across that rhythm with the tang tang, which is a kind of a kashishi on the bottom and a like Indonesian knocker kind of tuned instrument on the top. Now, Keita Ogawa is also playing a shaker instrument, this particular shell rattle right here. And he's also playing cowbells, like really resonant cowbells with mallets. It's a really cool part that kind of fits and overlaps some of the other rhythms that are happening in the rhythm section and the percussion section. And Marcelo Woloski is playing the bembe conga pattern, which I want to get into right now. Let's talk about the bembe parts. Now, the part that he's playing is the supporting drums for bembe. And we're talking about bembe. Now, bembe, let's talk about that just for a second. Bembe is a different thing in Cuba than it is in New York. If you're talking about bembe in New York, you're talking about like playing with bata drums, uh, religious ceremonies, things like that. Now, 
It's also religious music in Cuba, if you're talking about Bembe, but not necessarily on the sacred level, okay? Um, it's definitely on the communal uh, street level even, uh, the social, the party level even. It's still important, very important music, but it's more informal, okay? Um, you'll have some regions of Cuba developing a Bembe styles of drumming with sticks and hands and other regions playing just with hands, some with shekade, some without. Um, there's different types of bembe styles and approaches to playing bembe rhythms, but in this case, we're talking about a bembe rhythm that's very common with hands, and there's two drum parts that we're gonna focus on here. And Marcelo plays both of those parts together, but let's break them down one at a time. Now the first part is the high drum part, and we'll play it first the way you have to play it with one hand as Marcelo plays it, and then we'll show you how it might be played if you were just playing that one part in an ensemble. Now let's do the same for the segundo part, the, the conga drum part, uh, and we'll play it with one hand, and then we'll play it like you may play it with an ensemble, if that was the only drum you were playing. So these are the support drums, the quinto and the conga in this case, but the lead drum for this style of bembe is actually played with a larger drum, usually the tumba, or if they're using bembe drums, they might use uh, the larger drum as a kind of master drum. That, that goes way back to the West African uh, style approach to drumming and uh, drumming ensembles and how the larger drum is usually uh, the lead drum or the master drum, um, and the smaller drums are paired and uh, there's a, sm a smaller um, and uh, medium-sized drums that kind of support uh, the, the master drum parts as well as shakers, bell pattern, all to then back up vocals and dancing. It's all one package. Vocals, song, dancing, drumming, the party, everything, it all goes together. So you talk a little bit about um, using folkloric rhythms, but not really focusing on on trying to kind of put all those parts together for the sake of it, but just because they are rhythms that have that have influenced you and it's kind of maybe what you're feeling or hearing in the moment. You dig into that stuff in some of your um, your sessions, your online sessions, which I checked out by the way. Um, you got you guys are doing that on Crowdcast, is that right? Right. Yeah, on yeah, Crowdcast, it's uh that's also like a, you know, a new challenge to try to you know, monitor the, the controls and read all the questions and, and try to still maintain like what I was planning on talking about. And, you know, it's like you plan on doing something and you get on my first couple, it's like I get on there and then it's like way off route. But I mean, they're, they're fun. And I guess maybe the listeners look forward to that because it's, it's a very real hangout sort of masterclass. It's more of like a, an insight into, you know, different topics. Viewers can go to crowdcast.io forward slash Narky. Yeah. That's puppy. It's like you have to at least pay a dollar to view each one. Um, but I mean, it's like amazing information. And there's all these special guests outside of the Snarky Puppy Circle that are on the show, like some legends, some young legends, and you know, some amazing artists that you don't know that you probably should know. This was a very challenging demo for me to make in terms of the guitar parts, the bass line, uh, the drum set, because I actually had to read music to learn these parts and then to play the melody. And I didn't, didn't even do the whole thing because I just didn't have time to do the whole song. And that's really not the point of the video, but I really enjoyed kind of learning the parts and, and, and kind of trying to woodshed some of this stuff before I ran out of chops because I'm not actually a guitar player, right? I'm just trying to 
throw these things down to kind of have fun with it and also develop and challenge myself as a musician. You know, the bass line was really fun to play and the drum set part reminded me kind of like a Carter Beaufort beat, but Sput is his own sort of genius. Like, um, he's one of my favorite drummers uh, for so many reasons. So, you know, he's not trying to live up to like a Carter Beaufort or anything. I think he's definitely his own player. And if you're not familiar with Robert Searight, you definitely have to go check him out. Search Sput, drum set, you're gonna find everything on him. So this was a challenging video for me and it's really good to challenge yourself. If you're looking for videos to challenge yourself, check out this one suggested to you by Rhythm Notes and check out this one suggested to you by YouTube. Please subscribe so we can help you level up your drumming today and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.